Hello everyone, uh, I'm Sagaraka from the Blank Slate and welcome everybody to the session 14 of Kalasi Ruguru, which is our initiative to celebrate Indian craftsmanship. We'll just wait for a few people to join in and uh, then we'll start off with today's session. So designing has several offsets to it and every person carves out their own niche with their own creative potential. So among such people today, we have with us Vaishnavi Reddy from Gunava Design. So I'm going to add her to the live right now and we'll quickly get started with it. Hi. Welcome to Karate Guru. I hope all's Thank well with you. So Thank you so much. Okay, so we quickly start off with the live session for today. Uh, yes. My first question being, tell us about Gunava and the products and the services that you offer. Um, so I think, uh, you know, Gunaba is predominantly known to be a furniture brand or a decor brand, which is personally, I think, you know, I see myself more as a designer maker. Um, right. We just start different areas of design and we want to expand into different areas of design. Um, so, for example, we do art with function and this year we've just started doing um, interior styling. So just because there's so many different areas we want to expand into and touch upon that I think, you know, it's better described, I better describe myself as a designer maker rather than a furniture designer. So, right. Yeah. Although I must so, say, being a, you know, just expanding yourself as a furniture designer is a lot easier, but uh, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Right. So can you tell us about the professional route that you took from your education to the inception of uh, Gunava Design? Um, so I actually studied in um, University of the Arts London. I did my first year there in Camberwell okay. and then I went on to study in Plymouth University. It's this small little town for us from London. Um, you know, for anyone studying, wanting to do furniture design, I highly recommend it. Um, just right. because you're able to design in your studio and then you go on to actually make the product in the workshop. So, um, you know, and also I think just the space in itself is very supportive. Everyone wants to see you do your best. And mm -hmm. yeah, so I did my undergrad there and then I came back um, to Chennai. I did a bit of, I interned a little bit and then I started, uh, you know, my brand. So, yeah. So you've always been very passionate about like design and like furniture design in particular, basically. No, absolutely. I think just design in general. But mm -hmm. I think that foundation year kind of set that, you know, I was always confused whether I wanted to jewelry or furniture. And after my first year in London, I was just like, no, this is it for me. Product is it for me. So. Right. So you basically just found your niche or like in that Correct. sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So can you tell us about the name Gunava and your brand ideology as well? Um, so Gunava, so so when I was studying uh, my third year, we had to come up with, you know, just branding and understanding the business side of it. So, um, you know, when I was away, to, you know, away from India, I just felt like the name had to resonate or have an essence of just being Indian. Uh, hmm. So when I, so Gunava actually translates to goodness. So Gunava design is goodness in design. And uh, yeah, so that's how it came up. And when I came back to India, though, I think I was just talking to you about it as well. You know, the name has been yeah. so many times in terms of pronunciation that I've just been like, <laughs> oh God, what have I done? <laughs> but yeah, so that's how it came about. Okay. So ever since its inception, uh, Gunava Design has put out several products and several pieces based on extremely varied concepts. So where do you usually derive inspiration for these concepts from? Um, so in terms of product line, um, even if you see a lot of our pieces, you'll see there's a lot of things that are inspired by nature, um, you right. know, whether it's our cactus console, whether it's our pebble bench or even our farm light, uh, which is right there. Yeah. Um, so even whether it's our farm light, I think most of it is inspired by nature, but we also do art with function. So art with hmm. function takes, um, you know, it's, it's mostly touches on social issues. Um, it takes a lot more to kind of conceptualize on and just the research, yeah. and the amount of time that we spend on it is a lot more. Also, because hmm. these you know, subjects are intense, there's a lot more responsibility right. when you, um, you know, speak about these issues. So just because of that, it takes a lot more time to deliver um, and research and just understand. But yeah, so it's a bit of both, but mostly it's nature and just things, uh, you know, the environment that we're in today. 
so can you take us through the process from fixation on a concept to like having the finished product right in front of you um so i think most of it really depends on the timeline that we have which also includes the kind of project that we're doing or the product that we're making right so um sometimes the idea and everything just falls in place it like that it takes a second mm-hmm. and everything is done um and sometimes it takes a week so it just really depends on you know the kind of project that we're doing and also my mental space so it's a couple right. of things uh but once you know it's ready to go our product we start manufacturing it um and then if we we're lucky and we have that time we you know we're able to document it well if not it's just ready to be shipped and out it goes so okay. yeah so for like a like to actually uh, get a con- get a particular concept into a product uh i think the most important step would be finding the right materials and finding the right techniques to like play around with and like basically what's best suited for the product that you visualize so how do you decide on the same um so i think with materials and just technique right i think it all just mm-hmm. comes down to experimenting the more you experiment the more results that you get and it's easier to sort of pick and choose what works best for you um right. so i think if, you know even during this lockdown i think we our farm life was ready for you know production ready for uh, we were ready for the sketches and the rendering and everything and this was during like peak lockdown so obviously mm-hmm. it was to be made in camp so during that time um, you know they, we weren't able to get into workshops you know we can't work with the our craftsmen so um another alternative that we did we worked with the manufacturer to kind of come up with um laser cut wood to give you the texture of cane um, right. and that didn't happen overnight that happened you know there's a lot of trial and error the first time it came about it was burnt it just looked like burnt bread so <laughs> and to now if you look at it you won't even be able to tell the difference between actual cane and you know this laser cut wood so i think it all just comes down to experimenting and you know working with different prototypes to see what's best trial and error and all absolutely, of that yeah absolutely right. yeah yeah, yeah. So where do you source all the materials that you use for your products from? Um, and like where does the whole in process work happen? Um so most of our uh, materials is sourced from in and around Tamil Nadu and hmm. um in process work happens in our workshop here or if in case we feel like it's a bit complicated or we can't find the right tools or materials to kind of work with then we send it out to different manufacturers to get it made. so we give our design and then it gets made and that's actually also worked really well for us so um yeah so we either get it made or we give it to different manufacturers to get it made both ways okay so like uh you work with a lot of uh, local craftsmen so how are they benefited from the entire process um you know honestly most of our products if you like if you take a look i'll always mention handcrafted so uh, yeah. i think 80% of our products are handcrafted um and i'm very proud of that um, um mm-hmm. you know like for example my mom used to be working with embroidery for the last 20 25 years and um she used to most of our craftsmen used to come from this area called sri perambattur and back then mm-hmm. when she was working she'd say the place is filled with you know really skilled craftsmen and now when i'm working 25 years later it's about let's say one fourth and that's so sad to me um and this is a number that i definitely do want to you know i want to help in kind of keeping it up um hand yes. crafted work is something that i completely support and although you know it is more expensive it's definitely more time consuming but it's something that can't be replaced i really see the value right. in it um you know and i just kind of want to see and keep pushing it forward so yeah <laughs> i think like nowadays we see a lot of brands who you know actually have become more aware and conscious of how they are even getting their products made and the whole fact of them becoming inclu- more inclusive of like a larger section of the society basically by benefiting them and who better to engage with than the people who are actually best at doing what they do so absolutely you know, i like, would be nowhere without them so yeah sure. truly yeah, right yeah. so like um what would you, what's partic- is there a particular style that you would cla- you would classify your products under um so i think you know we do have a lot of varied products we also have a lot of traditional work that we do but i think what i'd like to kind of categorize be categorized under is just very edgy minimalistic 
Like I don't right. know if that's the right way of putting it, but if you see a lot of our work is very clean, um, all yeah. all like very organic shapes, but very simple forms. Mm-hmm. Um, but with a little bit of quirk in it, um, and I think yes. that quirk kind of makes it stand out. So yeah, so I can't categorize our products. I'd say like edgy, minimal, um, or just like quirky, super quirky, something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, are there any particular fabrics or particular techniques that you like? You love to play around with? Um, I've always been somebody who is obsessed with experimenting, right? So mm-hmm. if there's a product or if there's a material that I haven't worked with, I'm very excited to work with it and just to kind of understand and learn from it. I remember even during like uni, um, my tutor would tell me stick to stick to like one material, stick to wood. Usually, he'd say. But I've always been somebody who's like kind of you know loves experimenting, and this mm-hmm. year in particular, um, I started working with stone a lot more. And I'm obsessed mm. with it. Like I'm obsessed with it, and um, I think I really want to take that material and see how we can like push it forward and just kind of expand. What can we get? Yeah. Yeah. How how what 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 can we get do with it? What can we do different with it? So um, yeah, stone is really exciting to me. Like a lot of my <laughs> own house, like I have a lot of um, things made out of stones. So hmm. yeah. Basically, any new material that comes up or like comes in front of you, that's. What you're excited yeah. to play with? So you yeah. can get yeah. right now, we're also working with recycled plastic waste, and I cannot mm-hmm. tell you how uh, you know how restrictive that material is. Okay, um, I mean, it's a great material, but it's not very as flexible as say like wood or metal, right? right? And it's mm-hmm. also very new comparatively. So there's so much that we're learning from it. Uh, just the process of working with it takes a lot longer to kind of achieve what you want. But it's still exciting. It's it's new. It's uh, it's different, and it's a great material. So I'm really excited to you know just bring that and out. And I'm sure like the end product of it will also be as you know worthwhile, kind of, like worth the effort so. that you have put in. I really, really hope so. So everything has been this year. Most of it has been during this lockdown. So I'm hmm. just hoping it all comes together, and you know it's it's worth that wait. So yeah. yeah. So what does your team look like then? My team. Ah, Your okay. Team, my team. Yeah. Um, so we're actually really small. Um, we just started off a couple of years ago, and um, we're about three of us in design, and then we have somebody who looks at the business end of it, accounts, and all of that. Um, and then we also have our wonderful craftsmen who produce all the lovely work. And um, mm-hmm. yeah. We're a small team, but we're a bunch of hardworking people. I'd like exactly, to... yeah, that's what matters. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. And there's no so, at the end of all of it. So correct, correct. Yeah. So yeah. So we're still small, but uh, we're good. We're good for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, do you have a personal favorite from all your products? And you know, can you take us through the process of creating that particular product then? Um. So one of my favorite pieces um, was the last project that I did during university, and the only reason I'm bringing it back to like you know a few years ago is because mm-hmm. I'm very proud of it. It's something that I even till date that I love to like display and show off. Um, right. It's um, this piece that we worked on with um, just to bring awareness on sexual assault. It was um, you know the whole narrative was done on a chowki. And a chowki hmm. is actually um, a low-lying piece of furniture that, in school, actually we'd sit on the floor and then we'd write on a chowki. So most of our education uh, was done on uh, through this product. So I learned a lot of like information, like my knowledge. I feel like came through this product for very yeah. early on in my life. Um, so we used this product and um, um, we got a lot of the, you know we have a lot of goddesses, you know, images placed around our walls at home. So we replicated that on this chowki. And we swap the images of the goddess to image of women actually being harassed. Mm-hmm. So um, just to kind of draw attention to it, bring conversation about it. And I spoke to so many different people, even men, in fact, um, just to kind of understand their story, what they've been through. Um, and I think it was just the overall the experience was very emotional and uh, very personal. And also, we were able mm-hmm. to raise money for an organization we were working with. And we did a short film, which now I think could have been way better. But we did a small short film, and it was yeah. also nominated for best short film in New Designers London. Wow! Okay. So, yeah, so I think this overall was just a great experience. Worked on it for like mm. three months, and just learned a lot through it. So 
um, yeah, and it was also, I think, you know, just things like it was very, the uh, images were not easy to kind of embroider, right? These are pretty exactly. violent images. So yeah. Dash is down with my craftsman and explained to him why we're doing this, the reason behind it, and so the important, the and the importance that it had, like, it was important to me that he was able to understand what he was doing. Right. And to kind of have his support because he was the one, you know, narrating this whole thing through his skill. So just, just that whole thing, in fact, was just, uh, just really uh, helpful and just was just a great experience to have. Yeah. I think for me, uh, one of like what my favorite, personal favorite from all your products would be, would be the Nazar uh, mirror. Mirror? <laughs> like, you yeah, know, I'm sorry. Like, ever since, I mean, uh, at least in the lockdown and uh, sometime before that, we've just started talking about self-love and, you know, how everyone's beautiful in their own way. So it's like anybody yeah. who looks into my mirror is beautiful and like, kisi ki nazar na lagi. Correct, correct. That was exactly, the whole idea behind like, it. It's that phrase everybody relates to in India. Like you go to any shadi or anything, you find at least yeah. one person telling you, you know, you look so pretty. Like, okay. Absolutely. And you so, have that jewelry you wear, right? With the yeah, 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 the yeah. And I actually really enjoy making that mirror, and I and I think you know, even now we've got an order for a green mirror which we've never done. So I, mm-hmm. I you know, it's, I'm so happy making it. And somebody asked me for a pink nazar. So it's, I, I yeah. like that you know, the idea is still intact, but people just want to play with that color. Exactly, so, yeah. Yeah. And so, I think yeah. it's such a cool take from the whole concept. Even, correct, yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when you enter into someone's house, right? Yeah. So, so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, like, where do you, like, display your products and where do you sell them? And do you also take part in exhibitions as well? Um, so, most of our products are sold uh, through Instagram, which I'm very grateful for, just because it's such an easy, um, you know, a platform to kind of sell and showcase yeah. your work. But we also have, um, you know, a couple of brands that we're in talks with to kind of place our products on their website. And just recently, um, we also um, launched a few products with Cape Cameron in Chennai. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully soon enough, we'll um, also come up with our own um, e-commerce website. So, um, yeah. So, but it's as, so as of now, very thankful for Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Really though, like Instagram has become that platform for almost everybody now. And it's like been so helpful especially in this lockdown because everything ended up becoming digital and basically yeah. e-commerce too. no absolutely and you know a few years back you had to have a store that's the only way to kind of yeah. work and now you know every you just need a workshop and everything can be done online so right. uh, yeah so it's to, an absolute i'd say like a game changer just for everybody trying to sell Definitely. their work yeah yeah, yeah. So, uh, do you believe in collaboration and customization according to like a particular client's needs or do you sell strictly from a catalog? Um, so I think both collaboration and customization are something that I completely believe in. Just collaboration, I think with the right, you know, person, right brand, just yeah. kind of have similar, you know, ideology and similar ways of working. But in terms of customization, everything in our catalog is, uh, you know, completely can be customized, whether it's the color, whether it's hmm. the measurements, um, and even if it's a different material that you'd want, if it can be done, we're all for it. Um, right. so yeah, both are things that uh, customization especially is something that we're all for. Um, even if you want something completely brand new, that's completely, that's exactly what we do. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, love both of them, <laughs> collaboration and customization. Yeah. Right. So um, every person has, you know, a particular milestone that they reached in life and a certain amount of struggle behind reaching that milestone. So can you tell us what that milestone for you was and uh, what was your struggle like behind it? Um, I mean, we've definitely had like ups and downs, right? But I think a significant milestone is definitely not something we've reached yet. Um, it's it's mm-hmm. far off. Um, and I think, you know, when we're closer to that stage and we want to expand more and grow more, when we're closer to that stage, I think there'll be a lot of struggles that will come across. But as of now, uh, there hasn't been a significant milestone that, you know, uh, I feel like we've achieved. So I mm-hmm. think along the way, we'll, we'll, the struggle <laughs> is coming, but it's just not coming. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. 
So, since you said you don't exactly have a milestone, um, what would be your greatest challenge to date then? Um, so, in terms of challenge, I think, you know, I feel like I started off quite young um, on my own, not knowing the business side of it. And I think when you run a business, it's very important to be firm and stand your ground. So, right. um, that's from, so I think when I started off, I was just nearing 23 around that age. And uh, I think when you're, you know, a young girl, I think working with people, you know, men, especially twice your age or three times your age, it's very easy to get undermined, right? Um, mm-hmm. And to kind of feel intimidated. So I think uh, for me, it was very important that I understood how to, you know, stand your ground when you're right, whether it's speaking to your team or whoever it is. It's important right. to be yeah. firm with what you believe in. Um, so that took some time. That took some time for sure. Um, and it's still, I think, something that I'm kind of uh, struggling with or it's a challenge for me a little bit here and there. Mm-hmm. But, I think, you know, just with time and experiences, you'll learn from it. But, um, yeah. yeah, that's definitely been a challenge. <laughs> yeah. I think I can relate. So it's just that you it just is. end up learning from your uh, experiences every day. You know, you meet different Correct. kinds of people. You have to deal with them in different ways. So I think that's what um, kind of helped you a lot as a person as well. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. But, so, yeah. um, are you working on, like, what are you working on currently? Um, so, actually, believe it or not, I'm actually assisting an interior designer, which is a whole <laughs> different, like, ball game for me, um, because it's very different from interior styling. And, okay. um, like I said, like, I like to experiment and just, like, learn different things, yeah. right? So, um, you know, you'll definitely find me doing, like, a random course somewhere, so you know, sometime, and obviously now you can't. But I just took the first opportunity I could get, and I'm into, uh, in, uh, you know, assisting an interior designer, um, learning a lot from her, and um, mm. also another. We're working on different projects, but one collaboration. I'm working with another designer, which I'm super excited about, just because there's so many different materials. We have recycled plastic waste, we have cement, mm. we have stone, um, we also <laughs> have. Um, uh, a couple of other things I can't really think of, but with different materials, it's just really quirky, you know, home decor products, yeah. which I'm really excited about, and hopefully it'll all, you know, come together by December. But yeah, I'm super that's excited. For too that. much to wait, so that's not a lot, like a long wait for us as well <laughs> to see what yeah, you guys have. I, I know, I know. It's, it's you know, December sounds like end of the year, but we're actually yeah. basically end of the year. <laughs> So it's yeah. not a long way to go. So I better get on it and I better get it done. So yeah, hopefully. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be great. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, thank I'm you. I'm sure it'll be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so, you. Um, do you have a message for uh, the future designers out there? Um, I think I don't think I'm in a position to like, I don't know, giving them a message or like advising them. But I'll just tell you what really worked for me and hopefully, you know, uh, if Mm. if anyone's listening, it'll probably work for them, um, is just to kind of find a good mentor, you know, whether it's in your university or whether it's whoever you're working for. I think you should be under somebody who wants to see you succeed, somebody who wants the best for you and somebody with a lot of knowledge, you know, because the earlier you start working for them or or you're just learning from them, the faster you learn, Right. Um, it's hmm. very inspiring to work in an environment like that. Um, so I think, yeah, so just find somebody who's a good teacher, who's a good mentor to kind of guide you along. Um, it'll just make it easier for you and it's just a more positive environment to work in. So, yeah, so find a good mentor. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Though. Because we, we yeah. are in that age where, you know, we are basically in a particular workplace and so finding those right people or finding the right environment to grow in is what is very important basically correct and i think you know often we think that we just you know like our whoever we're working for or the teachers need to be like we're okay with them being rude or we're okay with them mm-hmm. just you know saying whatever they please and i and i totally believe in that i think the you know the nicer they are the more encouraging they are i think the yeah. better for you, right? You want to do better in an environment like that. Hmm. So I just think that's very important. I don't think there's any need for anyone to kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, work in a, in a space where they think is being extra hard on them. So, 
So yeah, yeah that's something that I believe in only because I've seen the difference from like school to university, and just mm. how the teachers make a huge difference, just even personally on for me. So yeah. And I think another important thing is finding the right workplace that you know has the same ideals that you kind of believe in as well, because that's when you become comfortable a little bit, and that's when you like you yourself feel like exploring or feel like working. That whole motivation is absolutely. something that comes from that. So correct, correct. Yeah, I know absolutely, and I hope like people realize that you know you don't really have yeah. to work with people that are you know are rude or just. The horror finds just to work with. I think it's always better to work with somebody who inspires you uh, to do yeah. better. So, uh, and if you can find that, then great. Just hold on to them. Uh, you learn a lot more, a lot faster, also. So, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think on that note, we are basically going to end today's session. Uh, thank you, Mom, for thank being you a part. Mom. because like it's been very insightful talking to you as well so thank you so much thank you for having me this is just was i thought it was going to be very nerve wracking but you made it so easy <laughs> so it was great chatting with you thank you so much okay